Ectopic fat is an accumulation of fat in areas where it should not normally be found, such as the liver, the muscles, the heart, and to some extent, the pancreas. The session at the EAS discussed the effects of ectopic fat on the heart. It's a very relevant subject because ectopic fat is related with the development of many uh, chronic disorders, which are the ones responsible for uh, morbidity and mortality, mostly nowadays. Patricia Iozzo discussed the accumulation of triglycerides in the myocardial wall and the relationship between cardiac steatosis and myocardial dysfunction. Main information were that cardiac stenosis is indeed present in patients with, especially in patients with obesity and diabetes, before they develop any cardiac disease, and that the regulation uh, of cardiac stenosis is by substrate availability, fatty acid reaching the heart and glucose reaching the heart increase the stenosis of the heart. Concerning the relationship between cardiac stenosis and the myocardial um, function, uh, we found a relationship with the work of the heart. So the higher the content of fat in the heart, the higher the heart has to work uh, to push the blood outside to the rest of the body. We know that people with the same body mass index can have major differences in body fat. BMI does not tell you how much fat someone has in the body. It does not tell you how that fat is distributed. In clinical practice, the easiest way to estimate the amount of dangerous body fat is to measure waist circumference. Aria Sharma opens the door to another marker. Gianluca Jacobellis, he has been doing a number of studies that have looked at epicardial fat as a marker for the presence of visceral fat. And it turns out that not only is there a nice correlation between the amount of epicardial fat and visceral fat, but we have just shown that it is very sensitive to change in body fat. So, which means that when you look at patients and you measure the waist circumference and you measure their epicardial fat, what you actually find is that the reduction in epicardial fat is almost 30%, although you're only getting 20% reduction in BMI and 20% reduction in weight, which tells you that the changes that you can measure in epicardial fat are, or epicardial fat is much more sensitive to changes in, in uh, visceral fat uh, than other measures uh, th that we use in clinics. The concept of ectopic fat is so interesting and important because we use very easily clinically obtainable measures of uh, overall adiposity like body mass index and waist circumference, but so often these measures actually don't tell us what's going on inside. Uh, for instance, people can be thin on the outside but obese on the inside, and I think that's something that we really need to think about, and that's why ectopic fat measures can be so important. For the clinician, it's a very important concept. I think it helps patients understand uh, why modest changes in weight can be so important, because a 5% weight loss may be a big impact on visceral fat. Some of the, some of the hints, at least, from the work that you've done and others have, liver function test abnormalities, uh, perhaps diastolic dysfunction, elevated CRP. There's not a tight correlation, but there is a correlation with increased liver fat and other ectopic fat. I think those are excellent points. It's really important that we try to be able to identify patients who are high risk above and beyond, things that we can obtain easily in our office. Um, and all of these points that have been raised can really help clue us in to the patient that may be very high risk metabolically. So an important motivation for the patient is that with exercise and diet, a modest reduction in waste and weight can lead to big metabolic benefits. And it's frequently because you're mobilizing fat out of the liver or other, other tissues. It's not the total body weight. And this is very important so that we can identify patients who may really benefit from intensive lifestyle interventions um, and really help identify which patients uh, we should be considering to be very high risk in our clinics.